What did I say last time on my opening? Oh yeah, what's your what's your thing? What's your jingle? I don't know. We don't really have a jingle. No, we got the flight tails. Yeah. Woo. Woo. <laughs> oh, nice. Yes. Nice. Yes. yes. Nice. He's got it. He's got it. <laughs> awesome. So uh, this is the third episode of the flight tails. Woo. Woo. <laughs> We're here with Jake Ross. Yeah. Hello. What's going on? Good morning. Hey. And. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Pro Dustin over here yeah. yelling at us. I like it. Can you yeah. hear me swallow stuff on this thing? Because I I want to get real self conscious so, about that. Can... We're not doing an ASMR thing. No, no that's too bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about bumping your numbers up? Yeah. <laughs> Two dudes whispering into a mic. <laughs> <laughs> so you're a controller here. Yep. In Lafayette, Lafayette, Louisiana. Yep. Let's start from the beginning. Where are you from? Originally? Born and raised out of Sarasota, Florida. Okay. About an hour south of Tampa. Grew up there a whole life, 18 years. And then you you went to the Marines, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So right out of high school, pretty much sophomore, junior year, I knew I wasn't going to college. I just was tired of school work. So yeah. I was like, let me go. Let me do some other thing. And uh, I was in ROTC, JROTC in high school for yep. all four years. Yeah. So that was kind of like the, the propaganda push to join the military anyway. And then I was like, well, let's join the Marine Corps. If I'm going to do something, let's do it. Uh, joined the Marine Corps right out of high school. Ended up going computer, so data specialist is what oh, they called okay. it. Yeah, so I was working on computers for it was a five year enlistment. Where were you stationed? Uh, to start with, right? So everybody goes to Paris Island. Yeah, and then uh, that's boot camp. Yeah, that's boot camp. Yeah, and then uh, my first duty station. Well, at school in uh, Twenty Nine Palms, California. Okay, so that's like South California. That I sounds think, nice. Yeah, well, oh, I, think okay. it's, I think it's the I mean, biggest. California. Yeah, I think yeah. it's the biggest base square footage or square miles. Yeah, uh, and for all the armed services, because it's literally a desert. Oh, okay. It's it's uh. Oh, know, so it's not the no, California. Not, not, not no. what you think. Yeah. You know where uh, like uh, Palm Springs is. Yeah. So it's south of Palm Springs. Okay. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's 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 where everybody goes to do like their. When we were still in Iraq and Afghanistan, where they go to do their desert warfare training. Oh, okay. It's <clears throat> that was where I went to school. Yeah. Uh, so there, and then I went to first duty station was Okinawa, Japan. Oh, okay. Which was wild. I yeah. was eighteen. 19. How big is the, the the island's not very big. Nah, I think if I remember, it's like sixty some odd miles long by yeah. like maybe like 20, 30 miles wide. Yeah. It's a little it's a little thing. If you want to talk about like per capita bases, there's like six or seven U.S. military bases there. Really? There's like four Marine Corps bases, an Air Force base, a couple Army bases. Oh, really? No, it's wild. <laughs> it's, you know, I there's mean, more Americans there than Japanese. Well, you know, after World War II, it's like, <laughs> yeah. this is where we're going to project our power from. Yeah. <clears throat> we did it, damn it. Yeah. Uh, so I was in Okinawa for two years. Incredible experience. And then after Okinawa, I came back, and my next place was at uh, 1st Battalion, 8th Marines, in back at Camp Lejeune, okay. so just north of Paris Island, so yeah. back on the, the east coast there. That was really interesting, because uh, being attached to an inf- infantry battalion as a data Marine yeah. was, yeah. <laughs> was kind of wild. A lot of really good dudes there, a lot of, like, really gave me appreciation for the infantry and what all they did, because they'd be out there, like, breaking down weapons and oh, flipping yeah. tires, and, like... On their weekends, like really just getting smoked, and I'm up in the balcony, like drinking a beer. Like, <laughs> man, that's Watching tough. them, that's man, tough, that looks like bud. hard work. Woo. Yeah, <laughs> good thing I know how to type. But, yeah, you know. that's right. Um, <laughs> but no, really, really good dudes. I met a lot of really good guys, and uh, the com battalion I was, or com platoon I was with, really great guys. That we all like the radio guys got tasked out to them. I got to help out a little bit, but mainly I was like customer support for them. Yeah, yeah. So I did, I did like, oh man, all sorts of computer aspects. Uh, in the Marine Corps, because it never never stayed the same, because computers are always changing. So yeah. my job always changed. So I never really got a firm grasp on what I was doing. And to be honest, I didn't join the Marine Corps to be a computer guy. Yeah, I joined uh, actually to I, I think it was a crew chief or crew chief specialist or something like that. On your ASVAB score, they say this is you know these are the jobs you're qualified yeah. for. And I did well enough on the ASVAB that they say, hey, listen, we'll give you we'll give you a little three job wish list like what do you want to do so i'm looking at the book and I'm like oh man this looks pretty cool helicopters because the crew chief you know, yeah technically i think what it ends up breaking down you'd be like a door gunner in a helicopter i was like that'd be awesome uh second one i was like oh crash fire rescue at the airport let's do the arf job i was mm-hmm. like that'd be really cool let's let's do that second job was crash fire rescue like the arf kind of thing <clears throat> and i was like that'd be really interesting and the third job because i didn't i was 18 17 18 i was like i didn't know what i wanted to do yeah i was like computers yeah 
Why not? Yeah. And, and then, then what did the Marine Corps give me? C- the Computers. third one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was not top of my class. Yeah. I was not the best computer guy. I was so good at computers in Okinawa. They said, hey, Jake, do you know how to drive a truck? You can yeah. go get our mail, right? Yeah. Um, so I went like, I was, that's how good I was with okay. the computers. Like I was good enough to get the job. But like, yeah, uh, I, yeah. They you, did. If you want something to get swept, I'm your guy. Yeah. So I did that. Uh, like I said, and like I said, it always changed. So I never, one, got a grasp on it. And two, I just didn't, I just didn't apply myself. Yeah. Because I was like, yeah. I didn't want to do it anyway. Didn't try but, hard. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I got out of the Marine Corps. I was 23. Yeah. And then I just rolled into going to college. You Used your GI Bill, right? Mm-hmm. And you went to college in Georgia. Yeah. So I started um, the GI oh, yeah. Bill was a absolute windfall. It was such a great, great thing to have for me. Yeah. Because again, getting out of high school, I knew I didn't want to do more college. Yeah. So like I needed that time in the Marine Corps to kind of set me straight, which it absolutely did. Gave me a lot of uh, life experience and a lot of like stuff to learn about myself. And then getting out, I was like, well, I know I want to go to college now. Like I, now I'm ready. I've got the drive. I've got like the the want to go and learn. And it's actually funny. As I was getting out, I remember my first battalion, 8th Marines was about to go to Afghanistan. I went to Iraq with them once, really, really quiet in 2009. And as they were getting ready to gear up to go to uh, Afghanistan, I was about to get out. But it, like the timing worked out to where I went on one of their last workups. Mm-hmm. So like they would go to Fort Pickett for like the, the first stage. And then they would go to 29 Palms for the second stage yeah. before they went overseas to the, the actual combat uh, zone. <clears throat> so I went to him with Fort Pickett and was just kind of like, I was the extra body. They knew, yeah. everybody knew I was getting out. So you're I was just the there. extra body talking to my buddies about like what I'm going to do. And I'm like, I'm going to go try and learn how to fly helicopters. Yeah. And everyone's like, you can do that. And I was like, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. I wanna, I'm going to, I'm going to go give I'm, it a try. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I'm going to start looking into it. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's what I want to do. Yeah. I knew some of it was like classwork. I had to go do like English and stuff. So I, I had this big, <laughs> I had this big SAT study book. Yeah. And like, they, since I was the only, I was an extra body, they'd put me in like the mid shift where it'd be like, it'd be from like midnight to eight in the morning. Oh yeah. So it'd be like, you know, whatever. Like I'm just the guy sitting there, man in the tent. Yeah. You know, not a big deal. But I'm sitting there trying to like study. And I remember it was like, man, it was like reading Greek. Oh yeah. <laughs> Cause I'd been out, I just dumped everything. Cause you know, I, from like my sophomore, junior year of high school, I knew I wasn't going to college. Yeah. So, so you didn't like, really I, pay attention. I had two PE classes my senior year. Oh, yeah. Ah, you know, yeah. like. Uh. <laughs> so you were, you well, were trying hard. No, no. No. <laughs> no, I was not. But yeah, so I'm sitting there studying this this big SAT book. I can't make heads or tails of it because it's just, I'm just lost. Yeah. It was funny because this new lieutenant comes in and he's like, what are you doing that for? And I was like, I kind of explained the plan to him. I'm like, yeah, I'm doing this. Sorry, I'm trying to trying to go to college, maybe become a helicopter pilot. And he's, he's kind of laughed at me. Yeah. He's like, you're not doing that. And then my buddy, like one of my best friends now, I still talk to him. Uh, he's He gets up and is like, you can't talk to him. Like, like you don't know anything yeah. about him. Get yeah. out of here. So it was really cool to actually like go to college. Uh, I actually got out. And uh, since I didn't know anything, yeah, I decided it was best to go to a community college instead of wasting all that money on like, oh, a real okay. college. Just to get all the. Yeah. yeah. So it was actually cool because I got, I got to move back home. Uh, I lived there for about a year. I'd say just under a year. Moved in with some buddies of mine. We got an apartment together. Great time. I went to a community college, got like caught back up with like math and English and yeah. all that stuff. And it was actually kind of crazy because I didn't know how to make the helicopter stuff work. But one of the first <laughs> classes I took, I thought it'd be like an easy intro, like getting into college. Yeah. It was career explorations. Yeah. What, was, what is this? <laughs> like, it's just like a, it's an easy, it's, it's a first class for everybody. It's like, oh, just figure out what you want to do. With yeah. Your life. Oh, okay. Really, yeah. really easy class. Zero like workload. Yeah. But one of the final papers was like, um, she's like, hey, Find out your dream job and then look into how to make it work. Like yeah. Find out, like do a deep dive in all the steps, do all this kind of stuff. And I started writing this paper and I was like, okay, how would I use this? Because I was using my GI Bill to go to this community college. I was like, how would I, what flight schools would I use for the GI Bill? Now, when I went through, you could go, you could start from zero time. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you, oh yeah. Because now you got to have you your gotta, uh, private at I least. Th- I don't, and I could be wrong. They yeah. could reimburse you, I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when I was going through, it was... Zero, I just, you could have an, I, an inkling to want to go fly yeah. something and they'd yeah. pay for it. So yeah. it was really cool. But so I do this paper and like, as I'm like writing this paper and like getting all my stuff together, I start going, oh, oh, damn, this, this might work. Yeah. It was kind of, it was kind of like an awe-inspiring moment for me where I was like, I can actually do this. Like, this is what I was talking about. Yeah. So I found all the information. I looked up a bunch of different flight schools. Um, they all had to, they had to be accredited. You know, they had to be, I think, I don't know, there were a lot of specifications to it, but one of them was the accreditation. And I was like, okay, 
So I found one in Georgia because I had family in Georgia. Yeah. I got family in North Georgia, so okay. my dad's side. Um, so I was like, that's not too far from them. I get to go see them a little bit. It's not too far from Florida. It's, you know, I think yeah. it's like from where it was, it was like maybe like an eight hour drive. Oh, that's home. not bad. So yeah. it was like, and it's all down 75 South. So it's just one Interstate, straight shot. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, okay, this, this could work out. So I put the application in, did my time at the community college, got my credits up to where it's like, then I could start taking like algebra again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pass the class. Yeah, yeah, for real. <laughs> and then I went to this. Yeah. When I went to, uh, it was a, at the time it was middle Georgia college. Okay. For the, I think for how long I was there, they went through several iterations because they kept getting combined up yeah. with different campuses. And by the time we left, it was like middle Georgia state university. Mm -hmm. So pretty cool pretty cool college uh definitely a cool campus in the middle of nowhere to do aviation stuff because they did all of it but is it like on the border from alabama and georgia or? no it's actually um so macon is about i want to say it's like an hour hour and a half south of atlanta okay and then eastman where this college where the aviation school was is probably like 45 minutes south of macon okay and it's in the middle middle of, nowhere. Middle of the yeah eastman georgia great little town I spent probably four or five years there. Yeah. Uh, I worked a couple of jobs there. So I, I knew a bunch of people in that town. The only reason it's still there is because the college. Oh, okay. There's nothing else to I hold mean, it there. I mean, it's, it's your, I'm talking like one stoplight. Oh, really? Small Georgia town. Wow. They might've had two stoplights. Yeah. But it's just yeah. really small. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so it was, it was really cool because they had, they had, I think there was a, an 8,000 foot runway. They oh, had their wow. own, they had their own, um, Nice airport then if it yeah I yeah. mean to have a, for a middle of nowhere for really? have an eight thousand foot runway yeah you know? and they had uh, they had a contract tower there yeah which and in the school so they had the hangar and the buildings in the school in the schoolhouse they taught obviously fixed wing and helicopter flight instruction they taught the CTI program for air traffic okay and then they taught I think it's the two different specialties for mechanic AMP and I don't wow know, they like taught everything they did, for, yeah they did structural and engine yeah. and maintenance wow so they did all that. And what was really cool about it was obviously it was like, if you go through the flight side, you have a chance to apply to be a flight instructor. Yeah. If you go through the maintenance side, you have a chance to get hired on with their maintenance department. They had a maintenance department at one end of the thing. They had the flight, the the T hangers at the other end. And it was like, every time you did a hundred hour, you just taxi it down to the end of the thing. Oh, and, that's and nice. They, they tinker on it and bring it right back. Yeah. It was such a great program. I think the cost of it was like kept down because of all that yeah and it was really really competitive they had a ton of students they just kept i think they've kept buying new planes and new aircraft and stuff which was really great yeah um so it's, it was a great program and now again since they've gotten combined up with all these different schools they've i think they've got another flight uh program in, in out of macon now but now they're more of a state-run organization so they're okay. they're getting to be a bigger and bigger school yeah. in georgia so it was really cool. It was it was a great experience. So you went there to do helicopter training. You went through <laughs> private instrument commercial. Yeah. Got your CFI right. Did yeah, you yeah. instruct for a little while? I did. Yeah. So it was it was really um, an interesting experience. Going through flight training really taught me that I can learn anything as long as I just bang my head against the wall oh, long okay. enough. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, now long enough, and then long you got enough, it. It's gonna sink in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because there were some days where it was like. I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. I'd walk away and be like, what was that? I spent an hour like, what? I didn't do anything. I didn't yeah. learn anything. I, yeah. just, I just went like regress. <laughs> and, I, you know, 23, 24 at the time, I'm like, what am I doing right yeah. now? Still going to school. So you still have your ground school and all that stuff. But it was like the flight portion of it was really, and it, it happened several times, right? At like the private stage, yeah. like, learn how to hover was really hard. And then like getting into like the instrument stuff, like tracking yeah. a VOR and doing like holds. Yeah. It was like, I remember going through instrument and having those doubts too. Like, I don't like, know if I should keep the, doing this. Yeah, like, yeah. What the hell is going on? Um, yeah. So, so it was really interesting. It was a great time. It was great instructors I had and the way they had it broken down where you go to the ground school class and then you'd have your instructor and they kind of spaced it out to where it's like you do your classroom, you do your flight. Yeah. You do your in, like one-on-one, -on -one, like kind of like ground school with your instructor. You do your classroom, you do your flight, you do your one on one, mm -hmm. and they kind of break it up throughout the week like that. So you never like. So you're not in the class, just in a classroom for a semester. You are. 
Okay. Were, that was the, that was like the main ground school. That okay. was the, the, the accredited ground school. Okay. So you do that and they talk, a lot of it was fixed wing stuff they talk about because oh, yeah. that was the majority of the yeah. population there, but a lot of it translated to helicopters. Yeah. The one-on-one instruction was where it's like you'd sit there with the whiteboard and like you you and your instructor talk would go about over maneuvers stuff. or yeah. whatever you're going to do. Yeah. Like what you just messed up or what yeah. you're going to talk about that day. Yeah. Kind um, of debrief or whatever. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so that it was just it, to me, it just made the most sense. Mm-hmm. Like it felt like I was able to absorb it quicker because of how it was laid out. Yeah, I went there and I had no. I think I had done a discovery flight back at my hometown just to get up in a helicopter. Yeah, just like for an hour, and I thought that was the greatest thing in the world. Uh, and then when I was a kid, I forget why. I don't know if I had the desire or my mom wanted me to, but my mom got me like, uh, what are the glider lessons? Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> you don't hear about people no. doing gliders. I remember it vaguely. Much, yeah. I was that young. Yeah. I was that young that it was just like, uh, did we do that? And yeah. she's like, yeah, yeah, we definitely did. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't, and I, yeah, I think it was like me and just some guy, the instructor in the glider. Yeah. We did it like a handful of times. Oh, wow. Can we so, like yeah. hang gliding? No, no, no. Like the gliders, like the tow gliders. Like it has uh, wings and everything. You sit in the center and you fly the thing. and Like yeah. a Cessna tows you up to the air. Yeah. You detach. Yeah. And then you just ride the thermals. Yeah, it was crazy. Again, I don't know why. Yeah. I just, I remember doing that. <laughs> I wish I got a shirt from it and I wish I still had that shirt. I don't know where it is, but yeah, yeah I don't know what I was talking about. <laughs> no, you're talking about training, going through helicopter yeah, training. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And so, you're saying um, how, you, how you did a glider yeah. Oh, so I had like zero time pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I don't really count any of that stuff. The Discovery flight was fun, but I was just like a kid in a candy yeah. shop. So I was just, oh, man. Yeah. So anybody in your family fly or no. any of that? No. Okay. So no, you, you just decided. I, I wanted just to. to. Yeah. Yeah. I again, do I, don't, I couldn't tell you where it came from, but yeah. it was just like, I want to do this. Yeah. Uh, so getting to middle Georgia, it was even, even the hard days, it was still really, really fun. Yeah. Because like my favorite part of being an instructor, because I became an instructor later on was teaching people how to hover yeah, because it's so fundamental and like rudimentary to, to flying helicopters that it's it's like the hardest thing. It's like mm-hmm. learning to walk. Yeah. I've always heard it described like trying to stand on a basketball. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's, it's one of those things where it's like you're using all four limbs to control like the helicopter. Yeah. And it blows people's minds until they get it and they go oh it all clicks yeah. and it's so cool being like like teaching somebody that and be like you got it and like yeah. just kind of like hands off and letting them do it it's really cool i've heard people describe it as you know you most people are moving the controls so much when they're first trying to learn how to hover and yeah. then like yeah it's a the instructor will take it and it'll just be yeah. barely move it yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah so, I, so i i uh Started private with zero time, really had a, a great instructor. I had a great, the like I said, the school system was great. And we were flying little uh, Swizer 300s, yeah. which were just, they're just a ton of yeah, fun. There's so much fun little helicopters. It, we used to have some around here, didn't they? Uh, the, the Bristow Academy? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. That, that might have been before my time. Okay. Before you got here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, I went, I went private, instrument, commercial. CFI, CFII, and then when I was, then after that, I got started working on the fixed wing transition. So yeah. I started, I think I got private and commercial okay. uh, fixed wing add-ons. Okay. And I, I, I don't know if I was working on my instrument or not. I know I got like two or three hours in like a, a twin, like a sound. Oh, hole. okay. Uh, but it was like enough to like barely. You never got your add-on no. uh, no. multi-engine. Yeah, not even close. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like once we started getting into the, the, the nitty gritty of it, I yeah. was like, oh, this is a lot. To yeah. learn about. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about like, opposing forces. Yeah. And so, oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I was there for, oh, man. I think I left in 2016. Okay. And I think I got there at like 2011, 2012. So I was I was there for a yeah, while. For, yeah. So so even when you were doing the fixed wing, were you st- you were instructing helicopters yeah. at the same time while you were yeah, learning yeah. fixed wing stuff? So pretty much right after CFII is when I got hired on. The way the school worked. It wasn't like a rule, but it was like an unwritten kind of thing yeah. where it was, uh, you get hired on with uh, the flight side and you get about a year yeah. to get as much time as you can get, to get as much sign-offs, to get as much experience. And then it's like, we got to make room for the next guy. Yeah. Especially for the helicopter department. We only had, I think we had three helicopters at the time. And when I was there, they they bought the R-44. So they had a Robinson as well. Yeah. So three Swizers and the Robinson. And it was like, 
there was four, I think, instructors. Oh, okay. And then we had, I think we had probably 10 to 15 students mm -hmm. at various stages. You talk and you might have like two or three guys that are in the commercial side. I remember we had, we had like, not auditions, but interviews. Yeah. To be like, hey, give us a give us a flight plan. Give us a CF give us a CFI lesson. Yeah. Go let's let's go talk about it. Let's see what your experience is in. We'd we'd interview this person and we knew them all because they were right behind us in the in the schoolhouse. Yeah. And we were would, trying to get the best. Yeah, because you yeah. know, there's so few slots, you yeah. don't want somebody who's not going to take it seriously. Yeah, do it. yeah. You want good instructor. So, you know, it was just there were so many people vying for that job that it was like, oh man. So it was like, you know, after a year. See you later. Have a good one. Yeah. We're going to hire somebody else. That's pretty much how it went. But in that year, that's when I started doing like the the uh, fixed wing add-ons. Fixed wing yeah. stuff, yeah. Because I still, I mean, I still, the way the GI Bill worked was crazy. I mean, that seems like a lot. They That's a lot of money to go from, it's just a helicopter by itself. Like yeah, it's yeah, a lot yeah. of money by the itself. Like and the then, Swizer, I think, was the same rate as the Seminole. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the Seminole was cheap for what they were doing it yeah. for. But it was still- Pretty, yeah, twice the 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 pay of a Piper, you know, warrior. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was it was expensive, but if I didn't have the GI Bill, I don't know what I'd be doing today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So after that, you uh, got a job and didn't uh, you moved back to Florida, didn't you? Yeah. So um, you got a job in Florida somewhere. I think I had, man. If I had to look at my flight book, I think I have like a thousand hours or something like that in helicopter, and then maybe like a hundred to two hundred in fixed wing. Yeah. It's not, and it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough to really go anywhere. I knew some guys that went, they switched from uh, helicopter to fixed wing. And then honestly, we were talking about earlier, fixed wing to the air traffic side oh, because, okay. of the, because of the time requirements that the regionals had. Yeah. They were just too stringent. Yeah. So a lot of the guys left that way. But for the helicopter stuff, it was just hard to find work with a thousand hours. And, you know, I always thought it was kind of goofy. I mean, it seems like a lot, really. To well, like I mean, an airline fifteen hundred. You need fifteen hundred to be in an and airline. I was so just shy of that, yeah. so I couldn't go airline side, and yeah. I really had no, no desire to be an yeah. airline pilot. But it seemed it always seemed kind of goofy to me that like the newest CFI, the newest uh, pilots, yeah, were the CFIs. Like I get the need for it. Yeah. I understand like the the transition, but it was always like. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, and I'm going to teach right. you what to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I always right. thought it was the strangest thing. But yeah. as a CFI, it was really, really humbling because there was a couple uh, gentlemen I flew with. There's a guy that had, a, he had he had his own flight school out of North Georgia. And he just wanted to come down to get his instrument. Rated. Yeah. And I'm I'm instrument rated. Yeah. Let's get you. Let's get you. He had Swizers. So he had his own flight school with Swizers. He just wanted his instrument rated. Yeah. And I'm sitting there. This guy fl could fly circles around me. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like. Yeah, you're doing good. <laughs> good job. Good, good job, job, sir. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> so it was it was obviously just a formality, yeah. but it was one of those things that it's like it was really humbling because they were great guys. Yeah. Another guy was a C one thirty pilot and it, like a retired C one thirty pilot yeah. from the Air Force. A bunch of really hours. Really good guys. Yeah. But just like they clearly have more experience than me. But it was really interesting to learn from them and just kind of humble myself because you know you think you're a hot shot pilot. yeah yeah he's like you're not dude no Relax. You're not. but it's always interesting to me that you know the cfis were like the newest people but i i had only about a thousand hours at that time and i I'd, I'd signed off 10 people within that year so i felt really like i felt really accomplished some, yeah some of them were the old time guys some of them were zero to heroes so like yeah like started me. from nothing yeah. Yeah. yeah so i felt really good about that it was just not enough time to really do anything that I wanted to do, mm -hmm. which is kind of a letdown because, you know, like the first, the main job opportunities were tours out of like Orlando. Oh, yeah. Which are a nightmare. Yeah. I would yeah, never. I, bet. <laughs> I, I don't think I could ever in good conscience tell somebody would, to go I, do that as a job. I hear those guys up in um, like by Gulf Shores and stuff mm -hmm. doing, going up and down the beach. And I mean, doing any, tours any like tourist that. trap town yeah. Yeah. is going to have those, those helicopter operations. Yeah. Personally, <laughs> I'd steer clear of them. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't go to them. <laughs> sure, as don't, sure as hell don't want to fly with them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, and then it was uh, that or like seasonal work in like Alaska. Oh, okay. And at this point- it sounds fun actually, but- It does, but at this yeah. point I was with uh, my now wife. Yeah. We met in college. Uh, so it was like, I didn't really want to leave her to go yeah. do like six months in Alaska to get to chase a dream that- I think I still got buddies that still chase seasonal work. Oh, really? Still flying. And it's like, that seems brutal. Yeah, that seems like a yeah. not a good lifestyle, really, yeah, to yeah, just to be jumping own, around. Yeah, yeah, that's not for me. And like I said, the, the tour stuff, I just like, I knew that was a way to get quick flight time. But like, again, no thanks. Yeah. Uh, so I was really struggling to find a job. And it was kind of alarming because the, that, that year 
time frame was coming up quick and yeah. i was like i don't know what i'm gonna do yeah <laughs> yeah I, and luckily I, during that time i was able to get my bachelor's yeah. so I, I got i knocked school out i was done with i'm never gonna go back to school yeah yeah I'm, that's, done, I'm with done with that yeah so i got that knocked out but it was like what am i gonna do for work yeah so i ended up finding this place uh this this job actually back in my hometown which is kind of wild yeah because uh, again i didn't ever think i was gonna move back home just because it's that it seems like impossible. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going like, what was it? I, I can't remember one of the websites like uh, AV Jobs or something like that. There was a job listing website, yeah. and that Sarasota, Florida popped up, and I said, "Oh man!" So I applied for it. It was operations manager, is what it was for. So it wasn't flight, and I was kind of bummed about that. But I was like, "Is this just job? Let me get in there, start getting into the different aviation side of it." And I went down there, got hired. I worked there for, again, probably about nine months. So not long, under yeah. a year again. My wife, now we both moved down there. So it was great for us both. That job was not the best. Yeah. Operations manager. I did a lot of like bookkeeping for him. <laughs> the guy, <laughs> the the guy who ran the company, he wanted to start doing like long line operations, you know, where they have the sling underneath the helicopter. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's Oh, a, yeah. Like you carry and stuff? Yeah. Is that, yeah. Okay. That's a whole special certificate. Yeah. You got to get like rated for and checked out and like the fizdo has got to come out and do all this stuff. He didn't even have like a manual to follow. Oh, really? So <laughs> I'm going down there and he's like, yeah, make this manual for me. I go, all right. So I just, I just pieced together. page. I, I put together like three different manuals and then like made it specific towards us. Yeah. And delete, we, delete, delete. And then we took it to the FISDO and sat down with the FISDO, me, this, the owner and the FISDO guy. And the guy reads it over and goes, man, this is really good. And the whole time I'm going, are you kidding me? Yeah. I made that. Yeah. That's not good. <laughs> so, so we're doing that. And the guy wants to use this long line operation cut trees along power lines really with that you ever seen that like that seems kind of scary you ever like, seen that the it's yeah, like, the chainsaw it's, it's like, like a, a chain blade thing. yeah, yeah that's, that's right. what he wants to do oh, with really <laughs> he has mechanical engineers come out to like how do i build this yeah. i'm like they're like we're not building this for you <laughs> buy it yeah this is i thought they sell is, them they, i mean you can they do and they're they're pretty expensive yeah. but for a reason yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know so so uh, the mechanical engineer came out. It was the funniest thing because he's just like, no, I'm not yeah. doing this. Yeah. And he just left like, I'm going to turn down any money you give me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> not not the greatest operation. Yeah. Um, but I got a little bit of flight time. I met some cool people. And then that, like I said, that gave me uh, an eye opening experience as to how I think the aviation side can be done poorly. Yeah. So middle Georgia was like, I, I feel I always say this middle Georgia coddled me. Because yeah. it, so it was so good, smooth. The, yeah. It was so everything was by the book. Yeah, it was a state-run organization, so like they had auditors come check it all the time. Yeah, they were getting federal funding, so it was like it had to be right. Yeah, and they did it right, and they did it really smoothly. And then I went to this place. Yeah, and I was like oh. <laughs> total opposite of the spectrum. I was like, oh, that's what happens. Yeah. Okay, yeah. This, I mean it is expensive. Aviation's expensive. Yeah, but this guy, uh, this company was not not the best. Yeah. I don't I don't think they're any longer in. Uh, they're not in business. Nah, they're not in business, yeah. uh, and rightfully so. Yeah. Did you have another helicopter job after that, or no, uh, no, work so, for another helicopter? No. So actually, um, that job is when I found out that I got picked up for the uh, FAA for the air traffic okay. side of the house. Tell us the story how you got into okay. the uh, air traffic control. So at the flight school again, like I said, that's where I met my wife. Uh, she was in the air traffic side of the of the program, and I was in the fixed wing side or the yeah. helicopter side, the flight program and i didn't really care about air traffic mm -hmm. i didn't really like talking air traffic yeah i uh if i could now avoid you, it now you do it for a living i know yeah <laughs> if i could avoid talking air traffic i would have there were some times where i had to uh and sometimes you know helicopters were not going that high anyway yeah and we were where we were at we were on the the border of i think uh jacksonville and atlanta center so it was like we're at the cusp of like who wants to take us yeah yeah and we were so low that like i've had several of them be like you're too low we don't need Just, we can't Squawk VFR, yeah. have a good day. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, I was always like, well, that kind of makes sense, I yeah. guess. The way the air traffic side of it worked was it was a, it was like a, I think it was a two year program, but you could stay longer if you wanted. But it was like dedicated, like you're going to, you're going to learn this, you're going to do this, you got these tests, you got these simulations, yeah. and this gears you up to go to the FAA Academy. Okay. Yeah. And from the FAA Academy, it'll give you a better chance of success to pass. Yeah. To they kind of prep you. It's like to a get into the FAA. Yeah. 
because the academy is a, a pass fail kind of thing. Okay. So it was actually just a, like a long prep school for the academy, mm-hmm. and it was pretty a, a pretty smart, if I'm in my opinion, a pretty smart feeder route. Yeah. For the FAA. For some reason, like right as she was about to uh, graduate, they switched the rules up and they started doing, I think it was a bio cue. It was a bi- biographical was questionnaire. A, okay. Oh, a test. It, yeah. yeah okay. It was like it was like a 300 Rit- question test. test. Yeah. Yeah. 300 uh, question test. That was like, you know, if the sun rises on the east side of the moon, how many apples do you have? And it was just like, <laughs> what? Yeah, no. And it, and it was questions like that where you're like, what is the answer here? <laughs> yeah, that's right. So you would, you would do, and they would ask that same question like four different ways. Yeah. So then by the time you got done, fail. And you're yeah. like, how, where? What, where did I what, fail? Yeah, what, did, what did I get wrong? Yeah. Just, and there's been a couple tests like that in the FA where it's just like, you know. Have yeah, you the ever, FA tries to trick you. Have yeah. you ever seen ghosts? Yeah. What's <laughs> the right answer? Yeah. I don't I, I know, but like, <laughs> yeah. is yes the right answer? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's stuff like that where so the biographical thing came out and it <laughs> no, you're good. bro dustin is over are here these multiple choice are written these are multiple choice yeah 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 and then it's like if you have seen a ghost what it look like like yeah. it's like the next question a hundred questions to- yeah 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 how yeah very likely not likely at all yeah <laughs> um but no so the biographical questionnaire came out and it really just it tanked a lot of the a lot of people taking it because it was just such a out crazy yeah, yeah out there and i don't know yeah, the faa is always trying new things they're always trying to like really hone in how they hire people to get the best candidates yeah and i i don't know if that was a hit or a miss but it, it tanked a lot of people's chances and what it did with that biographical questionnaire is it changed it from the cti programs being a feeder program to now it was like the CTI program didn't matter. That, that Oh, okay. It didn't matter at all. Yeah. It was like this now it's a whole new, they called it, uh, I think it was a pool one or pool two, where it's like you submit your application and they break down your life experience and give you X amount of points for whatever you've done. Yeah. And then you're in pool one, which is the best pool, or mm-hmm. you're put in pool two, which is we might call you. Yeah. So it, it really messed up a lot of uh, people going through those programs, my wife's included. Yeah. What happened was I'm sitting there. I'm sitting there. I was at the desk at the flight instruction side of the house. We're just sitting there talking. And she's like, man, this thing's really, this thing's really tough. Do you mind taking the, the bio cue for me? Or, yeah. or not for me, but like, would you mind taking the bio cue first? first and kind of yeah. like, tell me what it looks like. Yeah. So I would do it. And I'd be like, yeah, they talk about apples on the moon and stuff like that. <laughs> and she's like, what? And I'm like, I don't, I don't and you know. you didn't even care if you pass or fail. No, you I'm just, just wanna, clicking yeah, away. I'm yeah. like, I've been trying to do it, but like, yeah. you know, whatever. Just giving her a leg up. Yeah. None of it works. Uh, it, it all is for nothing because yeah. the bio i think it was like two years or a year as two tests i know for sure but it was like it was a while where it was like the bio queue was the only like barrier to entry and then they started doing this other questionnaire that was easier to get into because it made a little bit more sense and the same thing where she's like hey would you mind taking it first and just kind of give me a leg up and i said sure so i took it and then i got an acceptance letter oh yeah <laughs> She, she she was not too happy about that, huh? It was it was mixed. It, it was, was mixed mi- emotions. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she was happy for me. Yeah, but a little upset that she, she didn't, didn't get, get it. Yeah, and rightfully so. She went to the program. Yeah, you know, I think uh, part of it too was uh, I think I was like twenty eight or twenty nine at the time. Thirty was the cutoff. Yeah, so I think it was another like this guy's a veteran. He's got pilot experience. Yeah, yeah. yada yada. He went. He's got a bachelor's degree. He's 30. Yeah. Uh, he's getting up to be on the 30 cutoff. Let's yeah. give him a shot. Yeah. And I think, uh, so I think that's kind of a combination of what it was. Cause those are some of the point systems that they based it off of. So then, yeah, I got, um, they called it a, a, a TOL, a tentative offer letter. I got that when I was at the Florida job. Oh, okay. So All like right. there's several steps. So in it between. took a while. To, oh yeah. yeah. It took a long time. Cause there were several steps in between where it's like, you do these, these tests for the FAA. Yeah. You get like, I think back then it was like a green check mark. It was either a green check mark or a red X. Yeah. It's like you pass or not. Yeah. So I passed and then it was like radio silence. You don't, but months. you don't know what you, there's no score. There's no score. No, it's just, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's just yeah. <laughs> way to go. Yeah, yeah. you did it. You <laughs> named how many apples were. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then, uh, so I didn't think much of it, where it's like, oh, okay, I'm just, I got to take this job down to Florida. We moved down to Florida. And yeah. I, man, I remember sitting at that office at that uh, Sarasota job and I was just like, 
Now you're wishing you were a dryer no. driver. Well, no, I was sitting there and I was uh, like, man, I got to get out of this job. Yeah. Like this is not something bad's going to happen and I don't want to be associated yeah, with it because yeah. this is not not a great place. As I'm sitting there thinking about it, bling, my little email pops. That's crazy. It's the TOL saying, saying, hey, you got accepted. It's like fate. Expect, yeah. Yeah, expect a class date. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh. I ended up getting fired from the Florida job. Oh, okay. But it was one of those like, hey, we're kind of running low on funds. Like, don't worry yeah. about showing up this week. You know, we'll let you know when you can come back. And I was like, all right, cool. That sounds fine. Yeah. A week turned into two weeks. Two weeks turned into they a month. They never called you. Well, no, he kept like email. Hey, don't worry, don't worry. We're getting yeah. our stuff situated. Um, a month later, I was like, "What's going on, man?" Yeah, he's like, "Yeah, we have to let you go." And uh-huh. I was like, "Yeah, but like, what?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I was kind of grateful for that. But was he going out of business at that time? Or he- yeah, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> okay, his whole operation was wild. Yeah. So you moved on from him. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was happy to do it. Yeah. So it was, it was, it worked out really well for me. So we went from Sarasota to Oklahoma. Okay. Uh, Because that's where the academy is. Yeah. And the the time between I got my tentative offer letter and then what you get, the last one is called a a FOL, a final offer letter. That final offer letter is like where they give you the class date, where they give you like the time to show up. It's like, that's the one that's like, oh man, this is it. So at at the same time, what was she doing? Was she, did she get accepted at the? No. So she got, she got denied and every, every year, I think. And she was still trying. Every year she kept trying. Yeah. Okay. Uh, So I think by the time that I got accepted and then I actually started Oklahoma, it might've been a year and a half. Okay. So it it wasn't like, there was probably like two or three instances where she was applying and getting rejected. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We moved to Oklahoma city because I know that's where the academy is. Yeah. And she's doing like odd end jobs, which is, she was, she was great about it. She kept, kept working, trying to stay in the aviation industry, yeah. trying to keep her radio frequency, like kind of stuff up to date. So she yeah. was really good about that. So we moved to Oklahoma, knowing that's where the academy is, man, I'm, we must've been out there. I want to say like four or five months before I even got the FOL. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Golly. Yeah. So we were out there. It takes them a long time to. It's a government. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we were out there for a while. She actually, she's incredible. She actually got a job as a RPO. I think it's a remote pilot operator. So it's like they do simulations at the academy. Okay. Because they're not, obviously, we're not working live traffic to yeah. like test you out. So it's, you're looking at like a radar scope. Yeah. And on the opposite end of that radar scope, she's the pilot, quote unquote. Right? Oh, okay. So All like right. she's doing the keystrokes and the entries to be the pilot and say whatever it is you command the pilot to do, yeah. she's making those inputs. Okay. So she was, she was an RPO for the academy for, again, those like four or five months, which is hugely beneficial yeah. because she met a ton of people and, and it kind of geared her up for and, when she yeah. eventually went. Yeah. I eventually got a job. I was kind of lazy because I was like, you know, I'm going to get the, I'm going to start <laughs> yeah. working at the academy. I got to yeah. need a job. So I was sitting there for a while and she's like, you need to get a job. <laughs> uh, so I ended up getting this job. I worked as a, uh, what do they call it? Like a baggage handler at the oh, airport. Oh, like at the, yeah. I was, like a terminal. Yeah. yeah, yeah I was for the, the bags. For airlines. Yeah. Mm-hmm, cleaning the airplanes and <laughs> oh, stuff. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did that for about a month or so. Uh, and it was, no, that wasn't long at all. No, no. And it was it was bad too because it was one of those things where it was like I didn't know when we were starting the academy, but I needed to work. Yeah, and yeah. I, you need I to didn't want to money. tell them like, hey, listen, I'm not here long. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. they hired me as like the new supervisor, and I was like, oh, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I was like, there are better people. I'm just telling yeah, you. Yeah. And it didn't help too because like you know I came in, it was like a crew of like ten guys. Yeah. And like they're like. Why are Why? you the new yeah, super? Yeah, and I was like, that's right. and I was just like, I don't know. I, I don't know. T- I don't know. I'm I don't sorry. know what happened. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's just crazy. Yeah. Uh, so I worked there. Really great crew. Those, yeah. those guys were actually really awesome. And it's, it's hard work. Uh, so those, oh, yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, we were in Oklahoma, you know. Well, in, in the weather, you're out in the yeah, weather. Yeah. And I, I mean, it on the snows tarmac. and it freezes mm-hmm. and all that stuff. You're all out there. that stuff. Yeah. And uh, and you're slinging bags around. You're crouched. You know, yeah. You're having to clean the plane in like a timely get, fashion. You, you got to get up in the baggage compartment oh, yeah. and then yeah, organize yeah. all that stuff. That was kind of a cool experience yeah. to say I've been able to do that. But uh, yeah, it was. I mean, it's hard work. Yeah. And then it's like you got to clean the septic tank and all that yeah, stuff. And it's yeah. gross. Yeah. I it bet can it get is. gross. <laughs> it is. Um, and no and tell the, them what you find up in the there. turnaround time. You know, yeah. you're talking when it gets to the gate. Yeah. Start working on it. Yeah. And it's like you've got. 20 minutes in mm-hmm. the job is going to take 30, 45 minutes. Yeah. So it was, it was really interesting. 
then I finally got the FOL saying, hey, this is your class date. And I was like, great. We were living out of a cheap, cheap one bedroom apartment. Oh, okay. So I went to the academy. That's for uh, three months. I did that. And that was an experience because it's, you know, it's pretty easy up until like the last week. So normally like a, a, a controller goes to the academy. Mm-hmm. Passes the academy and mm-hmm. then then gets goes somewhere else, right? Yeah, yeah. The way the FAA does it, it's like again, it's like anything government related. Yeah. And and I knew this. I should have really remembered this from the Marine Corps, where the government sends you where they want to send you. Yeah, um, yeah. You don't have a choice. I mean, they give you the illusion of choice, yeah. but it's it is what it is. Yeah. When I was going through, you have to do seventy or better, which is it sounds kind of crazy, but you only have. Four simulations to run. So I was in the tower side of it. There's okay. tower and in route classes. I was in the tower class. There were nine, 18 or 19 of us in that class. Great. Everybody's great in that class. Good, good classmates in a mix of like, I had no experience. There were some CTI grads in that class. There were people that were from the military in that class. Yeah. So a good mix of like experience. And uh, you do two tower runs and two ground runs. And again, this is all simulated, but Again, there's an RPO sitting there working with you yeah. so they can fix it and they'll look all on a computer screen. And uh, you have to use the separation and all the point sixty five rules that we have as air traffic controllers. You have to use all those that you learned to keep everything as safe as possible. Yeah. Anything that's unsafe, you lose points. You get X amount of points taken off, you get kicked out. Okay. It was actually really, really unfortunate because we had a, uh, we had a long weekend for Christmas. And it was like, we wanted to get it over with. Yeah. But it was like, oh, we have a long weekend for Christmas, but you can't go home because you got to be back for your evals. Oh. And I was like, okay, that's cool. <laughs> so then we come back and it's like, you know, the holiday season. Yeah. Are we going to make our careers or not? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So it was, yeah. It, was, it was extra stress on yeah. top of that. And then for uh, my wife and I, we're sitting there. <laughs> And she's like, you need to get this. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I know. I'm, I know. I, I'm struggling right yeah. now. Yeah. So out of like the 18 or 19 of us, there was a guy, first day, first, first simulation, you can do so bad that you are mathematically eliminated from all the other evaluations. Oh, okay. He was done the first. First, first 20, 30 minute run. Yeah. Pack your bags. See you later. Wow. Yeah. And out of the 18 of us, 18 or 19 of us, I think only about eight or nine passed. Wow. Yeah. So you've, I guess, found that out that day and then you were doing your eval too. Yeah, so like that's said, probably extra stress. On, yeah, oh, yeah. So you're seeing yeah. these people you were into class with for like yeah. three months like, and you've become friends with. Yeah. And you've studied with and you've gone out with. It's like, you're never going to see him again. Yeah. See you later. I don't, yeah. that guy, I never said bye to him because the way it worked, I was doing my eval and he was gone. Yeah. He was walked out of the building. Wow. So, and, and like I said, They've, they've since shortened it down to it's an, it's a smaller class size now, which I think is smart. But when I went through, they also said, okay, you know, depending on where you rank on the class, you're going to have an option of two places to go. I ended up picking Lafayette because I was like, it's in the South kind of, yeah. kind of close to home. I don't really want to go to Bangor, Maine. Yeah. I don't really want to go. <laughs> so they have a list of yeah. like, hey, we need people in these places. Facilities throughout the NAS. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and then, so you just look through there and figure out yep. where- where you want to be. Yep. I got a buddy closest. that's in uh, Nantucket right now. Okay. And it's a cool place, yeah. but the cost of living's high and they don't pay that much. And it's one of those like And weird... you have to really kind of live on the island, huh? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you can't he's, go back. He's commute. making it work. Uh, yeah. And he's doing a really good job up there. Trevor, what's up? He's doing a really good job up there. <laughs> Hopefully but, you listen to this. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, but it's, it's tough because a lot of these places, you know, like- Lafayette's a fairly small facility, but yeah. our cost of living is pretty easy yeah. and we get paid a pretty good amount. So it all works out. You go to places like Alaska or, or Nantucket or even like some of like the high like Aspen areas. Yeah. Oh yeah. Aspen's high. I'm, I'm saying. sure. Yeah. Sometimes the, the facility level doesn't match the cost of living yeah. there and it's not really offset, but it can be kind of difficult. But they give you this list where these are the facilities that need people the most and you pick that list and you go, yeah. okay. And then <laughs> that's like the day before you have to show up there. Oh wow! <laughs> they give you. They can give you a little bit of a. Yeah. Like, well, like, what about moving? I mean, they you give gotta, you. It's called change of station. They give yeah. you a little bit of change of station, but it's like, it's one of those like, you gonna show up to work? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Come on. Now. Yeah. <laughs> so it was actually funny. We actually uh, we celebrated uh, New Year's Day 2018 in Shreveport. At the, oh. gold, at the Golden Nugget. Oh, really? <laughs> Driving down to Lafayette, Louisiana. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> With our U-Haul and like our life attached yeah. to it. Yeah. 
<laughs> it was wild. It was a wild experience. So Lafayette, you just picked it because it was in the South, not... Yeah. It, what it was, was your other options? Did, oh, do man. you remember? Like I said, there was Nantucket on there. There was Lafayette. And I can't remember some of the other places. Do you, is it Was it like the military where you have to list like three or whatever? No. You, oh, okay. Like I said, it was... The way they did the list was like, okay, so we had nine. Let's say we had nine people pass. Yeah. They gave us a list of 18 facilities. Okay. Two per person. Yeah. And then... If you were number one in that class, you got to pick first. Okay. So then if you're number two, three, four, I ended up being, I had my last run at the academy. I was feeling really good about myself because I was sitting at like 80, 90, something like that. I was yeah. sitting really good. I was like, man, I feel pretty good about it. I went in there kind of cocky. And then one or two things went wrong. And it was just like, I came out of the class going, I need to do this math. I need to crunch these numbers <laughs> yeah. real quick. Did I make it? Yeah. Uh, and then I, I ended up being second from the bottom. And I was just relieved that I made it. Uh, but because I was second from the bottom, I had like, I think a choice of like all the other ones that everybody had passed up, like California. I'm not going to go to California. Yeah. Like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Like, there's just places I didn't want to go or live at. And it was like Lafayette. Let's try it. I've never, yeah. never visited Louisiana, but I know the South. Yeah. Um, didn't know anything about Cajun or, yeah. or Creole culture. So that was kind of cool. Uh, this the is a food. great place to be. Yeah. yeah. This is, I mean, this is a cool place to start. Yeah. It worked out really well, but it was one of those things where it was like, uh, yeah, I was bottom of the list and uh it was like okay we're going so how, yeah how long have you been here uh about six years okay yeah that's 18 2018 yeah. is when you came uh yeah okay it was actually kind of interesting too because like you get here and you have to so you go through the academy three mm -hmm. months of the academy and you're learning all this air traffic stuff and then you get to your facility and then you just start training all over again. okay yeah because you got to learn the area too huh and yeah, like well, yeah and learn how to use the radar and mm -hmm. all that. Well, so that's the thing too, is like we had- Y'all practiced up there, but- We didn't have, so that was the, the academy was just terminal. So it was oh, just ground okay. and local. Uh, okay. We call it what the tower yeah, is local. Yeah, local. So it's just ground and local. And then you get to Lafayette, it's an up down. So yeah. it's a tower and an approach control. Um, so you have, you have ground local and then you have radar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So we didn't get any experience in radar. So we have to learn it all here. And then, yeah, the, the Lafayette-isms where it's like, this is yeah. uh, the specific airport. You know, this is the operations we do. This is kind of what it looks like. And what kind of traffic you usually you gotta, get in that You got to kind of get into that mind yeah. frame of relearning this stuff. So, because yeah. you already have the foundation of like basic air traffic knowledge. Yeah. Now you have to apply it and keep learning. So, so here you are. Here we are. Yeah, in so, Lafayette. And, you know, <laughs> you start you start training here and then you go on to become, uh, we have OJTIs where it's on the job training instructors. Yeah. So, you start training in Lafayette and you get to a point where you become the trainer. Yeah. So that helps you to me, my experience with being a CFI, that helps you learn more. Yeah. You okay. Can, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. You get checked out being a pilot. You might think you know everything, but then once you got to explain it to somebody, yeah, you realize it's, it's a lot I don't know what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. That's right. I got to look some stuff up yeah, here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what, is it, what does it say? Yeah, Let's go yeah, see. That's right. <laughs> uh, so, so being an OJTI, <laughs> Being an OJTI at Lafayette really helps facilitate that extra yeah. learning and uh, help you kind of pass that knowledge along and, and keep yourself not stagnant because the rules are always changing. Yeah. We're a training facility and it's a cool place to be. It's, uh, I got some good coworkers. It's a, it's a great town. It's a great facility. So. Yeah. And my wife works here now. Yeah. So yeah. Works out Y'all work at the same place. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Uh, so how do we usually end it? Well, how did I end it before? Woo. Woo. <laughs> If you've made it this far, you've listened to the entire episode. And for that, we would just like to say thank you, and we hope you enjoyed it. We would also like to thank Jake Ross for joining us today and sharing his story. If you have any questions about today's episode or suggestions for future episodes, just leave a comment or message us and we'll do our best to answer. If you'd like to check out some fun aviation videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Owens Flight Training. Or if you'd like to get more information on becoming a safe, knowledgeable, and confident pilot, just head over to our website, owensflighttraining.com. 